All right, the president a few moments ago uh, commenting on uh, this uh, Donald Trump uh, tape that emerged 11 years ago uh, uh, to, to bring up with Foster Freeze at a time when uh, some donors, certainly a lot of uh, name brand Republicans, are abandoning Mr. Trump, some going so far as to say, drop out of the race, period. Uh, you're embarrassing all of us. Foster Freeze, you are still standing by him, right? Well, I'm not a Trump supporter, remember, Neil. I basically grew up uh, on top of a Palomino horse taking care of 140 Hereford steers and then moved to Wyoming. So the West is embedded in me. And one of the code of the West is you ride for the brand. So I uh, gave everybody a check when Rick Santorum, who's my guy, dropped out. And then right. when uh, Trump, Trump got it, I said, OK, uh, I'm, I'm not riding for the Trump brand or the Republican brand, but I'm riding for the American brand. And uh, that's, uh, that's a good brand to ride for. All right, so you're still sticking with this brand who heads the Republican presidential ticket, right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I sent him another $100,000 last week. I think uh, I, I God has blessed me with an enormous amount of success beyond my dreams because I paid not so much attention to where people have been and even where they're at today, but what they can become. And I harnessed people's strengths and pretty well ignored their weaknesses. It's obvious uh, the strengths and weaknesses of uh, our candidates that are in this race. But basically, I I'll make a prediction. If Donald Trump wins uh, uh, within one year after his ascendancy, to the White House, you'll be hosting Bible studies. All right. Well, I, I, that would be an event to watch, and, and I'd hopefully we get our cameras in there. But you, you've heard from all of these, including just a, about a, a half hour ago, Foster, the Republican Tennessee governor, says, you know what? I, I can't support you. That's now almost well, two dozen prominent Republicans who just can't support the guy, want to find an alternative to the guy because he has damaged, they say, the brand, and he's an awful... He's an awful nominee. You say what? Well, I'm saying Peter Haslam, Paul Ryan, and Ben Sass. They're still young. They, they can kind of see the vision. But America was yeah. founded on the Judeo-Christian value. And one of the key things about that is forgiveness. And I think a lot of us who see a brighter America because of all the wonderful things Donald Trump has said he'd like to do to change the direction of our policy, we're going to place more emphasis on that, for heaven's sakes, than we on our comment uh, 11 years ago. In fact, this could backfire because in the Democratic uh, uh, Party, there's a lot of Christians. And, uh, and Christians kind of are, are turned off by the the fact that someone would do such a nasty thing as to bring up something 11 years ago just for political, to getting political uh, Maybe advantage. so, Foster. And I, I, and I don't know where or how this came to light. I, I kind of understand the backstory on it, but it did. He said those words. They're coming back uh, now to haunt him. There might be other words. There might be other off mic moments that are come to light. We don't know. But I guess you, as a man of God as well, as well as a very rich Republican, um, <laughs> you, 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 you are, you are not letting this trouble you to the point that you reconsider him. Well, I, I wouldn't call myself a man of God. I'm, I'm uh, the key criteria of becoming a, a, a follower of Jesus. You got to be a sinner. That's uh, where I right. qualify more than a man of God. But uh, I, I believe that. Uh, we have to look at the issues. Basically, Neil, here I, I challenge you to do this and challenge every one of your readers or particularly those who are on sideline. Go home tonight on a piece of paper on the left-hand column, write down the issues that are important to you. And everybody's going to have a different priority. In the second column, you write down all the Trump's positions. And the third column, you write out Hillary Clinton's positions. Now, if you look at Tony Perkins, for example, a lot of Christians, they think uh, freedom of religion is important. Hillary Clinton has publicly said Christians have to change their beliefs. And then she said, we have the freedom of worship. Well, that's different than freedom of religion. In Romania, during the communist heydays, you could have freedom of worship. You go to church you want, yeah. but you better not be caught writing your Bible, reading your Bible on the public bus. So there's a does great contrast. Does your wife feel the same contrast. way, Foster? Does your wife feel the same way you do? Yeah, my, my wife is is one of these uh, secure women who, if, if she yeah. hears all these things that uh, Trump said, it, she doesn't like the, the terminology, but she knows there's a lot of guys out there that probably use the same language, but she's a Trump supporter. She's got her hat on, <laughs> making America great. So uh, Lynn right. is a very savvy woman, and she's on board. All right. Uh, Foster Fries, thank you very, very much. Very good chatting with you again. Thanks, and it's glad to have you back, Neil. I, I love you, man. Hang in there. You're doing great. Thank you very, very much, Foster. I appreciate it.